This is the end of SEMA. We're at SEMA Ignited, enjoying all the cars and the parades and all the bro dozers and lifted trucks. And if I never see one of those again, I'll be perfectly fine. But this is the beginning of our next adventure. Tomorrow morning, we have to be in LA for seven stock. We've got keys at Aria. We've got a thermostat at AutoZone. We've got a car at the airport. We gotta get all those together and make it four and a half hours to LA in a three rotor that's capable of overheating at any second. This begins our next adventure. One step is trying to find the person that has our keys. Oh, there he is. All right, next step. On to the auto store to get parts. I need to see if you have a thermostat uh, seal for a 93 Mazda RX-7. Okay, awesome, I'll be over. Okay, thanks. Cool, they have it. So here we go, we've got the magical piece right here. It's some sort of seal that goes around the thermostat. Ours was blown out. We got nice little rags for our sweet, delicate hands. And of course, no RX-7 is complete without jumper cables. The ones I have in it normally, back at home. Oh boy. Right now, we're in absolutely horribly lit conditions. We're in the middle of an industrial park, dead car, we need light to work on the damn car. We have no wrap, nothing. This is a wonderful situation, but you know what? We're alive, life is good, and uh, we're gonna find a way to get this thing to seven stock. So this feels like a combination of like World of Warcraft quests, except the quest givers aren't really that helpful and you can't ask them for more information. We have to do this ourselves. Jumper cable box. Bottle of real, real shithead purple that leaked everywhere. So the mistake we made here is that we gutted part of the thermostat that was needed to block off the shortcut valve of recirculating. So we're going to go put the correct thermostat back in with the correct thermostat gasket and hopefully be on our way. This back plate here is what prevents the thing from short circuiting and just keeping it in the engine. If you, if you have this missing, the fluid can just completely avoid going through the radiator. So the, so the fluid kind of comes in from this side here and chooses to go out a different way. And in our case, it was going either way, causing the car to overheat. This little guy in like that. Hold on, don't touch. It's like, it wants to just electrocute me every time I plug this thing in. check the coolant because we definitely just drove while well, topping it off while it was cold which on a rotary engine means not all the way I think it's the same thing for most engines is that if you don't top it off after letting it warm up and letting the thermostat open you're not actually finishing the job so let's see what let's, let's see what we're about to find out together is I'm gonna open the cap while the cars warm normally that means explosion and craziness but if it's running low not much will happen either way we need to know Oh, there's, there's, there's some coolant in there. Yep, we're good. <laughs> we're full. <laughs> this begins our adventure. We've got a couple gas stations lined up along the way from here to good old Ontario. We're going to see how well the car can handle the temperatures. Hopefully this colder weather helps us. We're about to find out. she feeling? So far so good. She's uh, warm, but not overheating at all. 
stumble when it gets into higher RPMs. I should say higher uh, wheel speeds. So the rear diff's definitely not happy. Probably needs to be shimmed or something like that. Let her cool down for a second, get gas, give her some oil, figure out just how many gallons per mile this car gets and uh, get back on the road. How long have you had this car? You don't know how many miles per gallon it gets. The joke was gallons. <laughs> For mile, oh, I didn't get, get it. Get I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to cut myself out. <laughs> no, you leave that in there. You leave that in there. I want to know how many gallons you think we used from the racetrack down to Vegas, doing a circle joker in Vegas with the wrap company, and then driving to Prim, which is 35 miles away. All right, and how many gallons does this thing hold? Uh, 22 gallons, I think, is roughly what this holds. You used 12. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not as, as uh, sadistic as you are, so I'm gonna guess seven. <laughs> we'll see. Twelve's not far off from seven, Rob. I know, actually, it is. Like, it's like, uh, uh, I'm not gonna go for double digits. Okay, we're getting fancy with this thing. It's a better setup than mine. I know. I'm gonna go for eight, eight ounces. Oh, you're not even gonna put the gas in yet? Nope. I always put it oil in. I always put the oil in first, yeah. whether that's right or not, because that way the gas mixes the oil in. Maybe I should start doing that too, and my car will start breaking down. <laughs> you should be feeling about half full right now. You are almost two thirds of the way full right now. <laughs> No! Oh, oh! Wow! We have fuel efficiency at its finest. That is 5.3 gallons on this car. I've driven probably 60 miles. That is roughly 10 to 12 miles per gallon. There you have it. Maybe even higher if I don't count the little turnarounds and all that sort of stuff. So we probably have about 15 miles a gallon. Thankfully, this car has six gears now. So what? Rolling shots. What kind of shots? Rolling. You want? Rolling. I'm, I'm unsure what, shot. what kind of shots you want. Shot. Are you talking about of you driving? Yeah. So you want rolling shots. Yeah. He wants rolling shots. You're gonna make this thing look even sicker? If it was wrapped. Okay, so we've, we've got less than six hours or so to the start of seven stock, so this is my beginning of my seven stock prep. Gotta get this thing washed. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All these fingerprints. <laughs> I feel so bad. It hurts, I feel so bad it? for this car, dude. Can't have it be looking dirty for seven stock. What time is it? <laughs> it's like two in the morning, <laughs> California time. We're in Baker, uh, which is where the alien jerky stuff is. Uh, the rear differential is really having some issues. Uh, I don't, I don't know anything about how to shim it. I don't, you know, I'm being told that's what needs to be done but I'm getting a lot of vibrations over, I guess, 65 miles an hour. Um, the smart guy, the really smart guy would have never driven this car without final tuning or knowing, even knowing how to do it, but uh, a smart guy would get it towed at this point. Uh, I feel like I've done some damage to the diff, I don't know. Only way we'll know is if we d tear into it, but what I'm gonna do is stick under those speeds, because it feels like it's it exponentially worse, and uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll see what happens, but car's running great other than one specific thing so it's, it's a bummer but that's my life <laughs> in Ontario we made it the rest of the way it's five in the morning Western Mountain Pacific Standard Time exhaust fumes have gotten to my head diff vibrations have rattled my brain but we are here we've only got a couple hours of sleep before we make it to seven stock I hope the car made that whole 250 miles and continues to make it the next couple of miles to Auto Club Speedway tomorrow morning.